And Tony Sanchez, we will kick it off with you, a familiar face. Hello, Landon. Tony Sanchez, San Diego Punto Football. Uh, with this upcoming game against Santa Fe for the San Diego Wave, what are some conversations that you've had with the leaders in the group, in the squad, as well as those players that are going to be instrumental for the play style you're trying to implement? Uh, hi, Tony. Nice to hear your voice again. It's been been a while. Um, I've I've spoken with the leadership group. Uh, there are four of them and Naomi when she's back um quite extensively and then i've met with four of the players individually and i will meet with 13 or 14 more this afternoon um it's important for me to get to know them as individuals quickly uh, i can see what i've seen in three training sessions so far from a soccer standpoint but i want to i want to get to know them as human beings so as you know tony um, we spend a lot of time on that and we build real human connections with our players and, and that's important for me. So getting to know them quickly is important. Look, having three se <laughs> training sessions in a game is certainly not ideal, but it's the reality. And so um, starting to implement some ideas, but not overwhelming them is the balance I'm trying to strike. So I think they've done a fantastic job over the last three days. They've had a lot of change in the last six or seven weeks. And so um, we've tried to stabilize, but also give them some really clear ideas as to how they can be successful. And I think they've taken it really well so far. And then just tactically, what are some of the strengths in these three sessions that you've seen that gives you hope uh, for some great things coming up for the rest of the season? I've been really impressed with everything I've seen. Um, there are a lot of good players on this team and we still haven't seen uh, Delphine's in but not not here with us yet Naomi's coming back Jaden's coming back from the Olympics so there are a lot of um a lot of good qualities and uh, you know pretty obvious or you know pretty clearly the way that I like to play and we like to play with loyal and there are a lot of uh, profiles that fit that perfectly so uh, I was very impressed with the quality I'm impressed with the work ethic I'm impressed with the versatility. Um, they're they're able to do a lot of things tactically and physically, and so we're going to be fine. Um, it's 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 difficult for sure when you have a game three days in, but I think they're in a good place, and tomorrow should be a lot of fun. Perfect, thank you. You're Dan, welcome, Tom. Dan Laletta, we'll go to you. Dan, you ready? You're off. Dan, are you sleeping? <laughs> Dan, um, if you're having uh, any audio issues, feel free to just message your question. Oh, I see. Maybe you did. Um, nope, different question. Feel free to message your question and we can get to it. Um, we will go to Daniel Alea. You're muted, Daniel. Gracias, Landon. Hey. Hey, un gusto, un gusto escucharte otra vez. Háblanos Gracias. sobre esta oportunidad de ahora dirigir internamente a lo que es San Diego Wave, lo que significa para ti por ser alguien es exclusivamente de San Diego. Y también coméntame, si, por favor, eh, qué significa tú como el máximo referente del de fútbol estadounidense ahora poder tener la oportunidad de dirigir al referente femenil eh, estadounidense como lo es Alex Morgan. Sí, en, en mi carrera, en mi vida, he hecho todo en, en el deporte. He jugado en todos, en muchas ligas, en todas partes de la juventud en América, Major League Soccer, uh, con Estados Unidos. Jugué en indoor soccer, jugaba en México, Inglaterra, Alemania. Lo único que, que no he hecho es con la femenil y ya tengo la oportunidad. Um, me encanta la comunidad de San Diego. Hace nueve, nueve años um, mudé con, con mi esposa y mis hijos y ya soy parte de la comunidad. Me encanta uh, la ciudad, la comunidad, la gente y mi vida ahí. Y por eso decidí um, tomar este, este trabajo y, y trabajar con, con el WAVE. Um, 
estoy emocionado. Um, es mucho, mucho trabajo, pero estoy en, en un parte de mi vida donde estoy listo para un um, con, con algo así. Pues por eso emocionado empezar y uh, mañana, después de tres días, em empezamos. Y sobre la oportunidad de uh, dirigir a Alex Morgan. Sí, uh, un sueño. Um, ella y yo jugamos um, en el misma, mismo tiempo en nuestras carrer carreras. Um, ya es, um, ella es al final de su carrera. No sé cómo tan, cómo, cómo, um, cuántos años más va a jugar, pero um, yo tengo mucha experiencia que puedo compartir con ella. Por ejemplo, ella no fue a, a los Juegos Olímpicos en 2014. Yo no fui al, al Mundial y, y hablamos sobre eso um, hace dos días y, y yo tengo experiencia que, que puedo uh, ayudarle un poquito, ojalá. Por último, Landon, de mi parte, eh, lo acabas de mencionar, tu amor por San Diego. Sabemos que este es un, una posición interina me imagino que ya hablaste con la directiva, depende de los resultados, si hay alguna posible extensión de contrato, quizás a largo plazo, pero si no, pues también sabemos que San Diego FC anda buscando director técnico. En momento, um, bien enfocado en lo que viene. Um, claro, hablé con, con Jill Ellis y Cammy Ashton sobre todas las posibilidades, pero somos de acuerdo en este momento um, enfocar en ayudar al equipo a um, avanzar de este torneo y calificar para los playoffs. Lo que va a pasar en el futuro, en el futuro nadie sabe, pero um, vamos a ver. All right, thank you. We'll go to Dan. I believe you have your mic fixed. So, can you hear me this time? Yeah, um, There you are, Dan. In business. Awesome. Hello, Landon. Um, can you just maybe go over the process of how you became interested in the job and how it came to be that you're now sitting here doing sure. this today? Sure. Um, I've I've known Jill since 2015. I was at the World Cup in Vancouver, the World Cup final in Vancouver, and we spent a lot of time together after the match and just got to know each other. Um, she's an incredible human being. She's an incredible leader. So we've kept in touch over time. And when she came to San Diego, it was nice because we could spend some time together. Um, as San Diego, as the wave got going and San Diego Loyal got going, we kept in touch. There was crossover. There were things we could do together, et cetera. So she reached out and said um, that she was looking for, she had texted me and I had texted her when, um, you know, the team was going through a hard time and just said, hey, I'm thinking about you guys and I hope you're doing okay. And She had sent a message and said, thank you. And, you know, if there's any candidates you think would be interesting, please let me know. And I didn't respond to the message. And I kind of thought about it for a little bit that evening. I talked to my wife. I said, well, I love San Diego. Um, we've loved watching and supporting the wave. I miss coaching. Maybe I should think about it. And so I sent Joel a message back and said, well, if you're interested, I would be interested in having the conversation and see where it goes. And that's how it started. And now we're here. And what would you say is your learning curve? Obviously, soccer is soccer, but what is the learning curve in terms of learning the other players around NWSL? Uh, steep, for sure. Um, I have a baseline. I know a lot of the players here um, from watching them throughout the last few seasons, but the rest of the league, now I'm going to have to lean on people and I'm getting up to speed fast. So I've, I've watched a a ton of film in the last two weeks, um, trying to understand the league better. But for me and, you know, for those who followed San Diego Loyal, 90 plus percent of what we do is focused on us. Um, I know a lot of people don't operate that way and they're kind of focused on the opponent each week, but we, we're focused on getting a very clear identity, building a really, really, really strong culture And those two team, those two things led us to to a lot of success with Loyal. So I, I anticipate doing the same here. And then, last thing you mentioned, the Americans are not back yet. Is Kaylin Sheridan there with you, available for tomorrow? Yes, she is. Great, thank you. Good luck in the role. Thank you.
Thank you. Thanks, Dan. All right, Steph Young, we'll go to you next. Thanks. Uh, hey, Coach, Steph Young with The Athletic. Just wanted to Thanks, ask, so you mentioned, um, you know, a steep learning curve, and of cells very uniquely. I'm just wondering, given that reality and you acknowledging that, what were the discussions like between you and Jill and Cammie, you know, if they had any reservations that it was a steep learning curve or if, you know, the sure. interim nature of the job may have particularly affected that? Yeah, look, it's a tough situation for a club to be in, right? And the challenge is when it's the middle of the season, certainly your candidate list is going to be more limited. Paul did an amazing job, um, I think, just stabilizing the the team during you know a hard time. And so the the, the conversations we had were really open and honest. How do we start to build something that is identifiable, um, that the club is proud of, that the ownership's proud of, that the players believe in, but that's also sustainable. And so now with Cammie here, she's, I'm, I'm just really impressed with her. Um, I think she's really good and she's been a joy to work with, to be honest. And she's stabilizing, uh, that side of of the soccer side and, and they needed someone to, to help stabilize. And I think just bring some confidence and belief and culture to this side. So that, um, you know, I don't do a lot of things well, but that is one thing we do well. Um, I did well at San Diego loyal and every time we played at Torero, it was a, a team and a product that people were really, really proud of and connected with. I would always say if you turned off the the sort of the header at the top of the screen and you didn't it didn't tell you who was playing the game, you would say, Oh, that's San Diego Loyal. And we're gonna do the same here. If if you if you don't know what NWSL teams are playing and you just turn on the TV, you'll go, Oh, that's San Diego Wave. I can tell by the way they play. And our fans will love that and the players will love it. Just one follow-up. You mentioned at the top that you really believe in making human connections. Again, in an interim role, and you just mentioned it's like a situation where you have to come in and stabilize. What's your personal approach to building those connections in that kind of context? Or is human connection human connection? Um, yeah, that look, again, not a lot of things I do well, but um, I'm... I'm my number one core value is compassion. And so when you've dealt with mental health your whole life, the one plus side of that is you have a lot of compassion for human beings. I know these women have been through a lot this year. And then in some cases, a lot in their careers, it's no different than when I was coaching San Diego loyal. There's some, some people who are in very difficult spots in the moment or have had hard things in their lives. And I don't view this as purely a soccer job. Um, my job is to have a positive impact on their life every day. That doesn't have to be on the field. I hope it is as well, but also off the field. For example, I had a long chat with Alex and, you know, I won't get into tons of detail, but I went through the same thing that she went through this summer. I, I got left off a team and I have the ability to empathize because I, I went through that. And so we had a long talk about how do you make the last stretch of your career still positive. I was able to come back and win a championship that season with my team. And that was the lasting um, impression of that season, not getting cut. And so I, I, because of all the experiences I've been through, I, I think I can connect with them on a, on a really personal level. And if I make them better soccer players, that's great. Um, and I think I will, but I want to make them better human beings too. Thank you, coach. You're welcome. Thanks, Steph. All right, we're going to go to Derek Togerson from NBC. You are unmuted, or you will need to unmute. Yeah. All right. Hey, Coach, you got me? Hi, Derek. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. Nice to hear your voice. Good. Nice to see you. Um, when you have basically 13 matches to the end of the season here, how, how do you approach this, as you were just kind of talking about being a, a mentor versus a, a coach on the field, how do you juggle – we, we can still make some progress and get into the playoffs and win a championship versus just kind of you know stem the tide to get to get everybody through the end of the season. It's a great question. So the, I've had long conversations with Nate Miller, who was my assistant coach with Loyal. Um, how much do you give them and try to implement versus not throwing everything out the window? Cause not everything that's gone on before has been a negative. There's still lots of positives. Um, 
how much do you trust them and lean on them to take the info quickly and and not just try to write the ship in the short term? Um, what, what we came back to when I, I had long conversations with them, what we came back to was two things. I only know how to do things one way, and that's all in and and go for it. So doing anything other than that would be inauthentic, and the players would feel that and know it, and I just wouldn't be good at it. Number two is I, after two training, three training sessions now, they are able to take information and process it much faster than I was expecting or used to from what from my previous coaching experiences. And so because of that, I've just said, you know what? I called Nate and I said, you know what? I'm just going to go for it a little more than I thought early and they can handle it. And so we'll find out tomorrow how much there's going to be lots of bumps on the road. This will not, you will not see a team that's, you know, perfect tomorrow by any means, but there will be progress. I think it will be clear to see. And then ultimately I think um, I don't want to live in fear and, and, and we just want to be brave and go and, and, and try to do things the way that, that I know how to do. And I think if everyone's bought in and does that one, they're going to enjoy it Two, the, the fans are going to love watching it. Three, they're going to connect more with the team and the community. And four, I think we'll be successful. So that's the plan. And then starting your career with them uh, in Panama, in another country where it's, uh, can that be almost a positive where there's there are no distractions at home? Everyone's got to be in the same place. You can kind of get everyone on the same page together. Can this in this very uh, unique circumstance, can it can it help you starting something like this in a, in a completely new country like you're doing? Yes. And, you know, part of the reason is we came two days early. So we came yesterday. We have all day today, all day tomorrow. So because of that, I have the ability now to meet with everybody in person. And at home, that would have been possible. I can't keep them there till 6 p.m. at night doing one on one. Um, having one-on-one -on -one conversations. So we have all afternoon in the hotel. I'm going to do 13 or 14 in a row and and get to know them. And that is a big advantage here. So, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Thank you, Derek. All right. We're going to take a few more. We'll go to Sandra Herrera next from CBS. Hey, Coach Diamond, can you hear me? Hi, Sandra. Yes, I can. Awesome. Uh, welcome to NWSL. Um, Quick question for you. You've spoken a little bit about the the timeline, saying it's been a couple of weeks and about three sessions um, with the players so far. But another timeline question for you in terms of discussions. Uh, it wasn't when you were announced. It was also mentioned that that Paul Buckle had served a very specific time um, for the wave. It was kind of a summer spell. Has there been any discussion um, like that with the wave for you as far as a, a timeline? Is this purely meant to be just kind of an interim role or is the door open um, for things with this club in the future? The door is open, um, but we, what we've agreed on is through the end of the season and we'll go from there. Um, we just evaluate how everything's gone and we'll go from there. And the good thing with Jill is we're just, we're very honest with each other and we both understand the challenges of leadership and how difficult it is. And so instead of beating around the bush, we're just honest. And we both said, look, if it goes well, let's have the conversation. If it doesn't, one side doesn't want it or the other, no problem. There's no hard feelings and we'll move on. But let's put our whole heart into it and go for it. And then we'll figure out where we go from there. And as far as like the the learning curve, you, you mentioned that it's one thing to get acclimated to, to NWSL competition, but now you will also kind of find yourself thrown into a little bit of a, of a cup competition as well. And you're going up against a team in Panama, does that take away maybe some of the pressure in, in terms of getting immediate results right away? But Or does it increase the pressure, especially with this particular tournament kind of having bigger implications down the road for a potential spot in the FIFA Club World Cup? Well, pressure is perceived, right? Nothing about pressure is real. So I learned that a long time ago. So I, I don't worry about pressure, but... Um, the, it, it's a unique challenge in that this is the first game ever in uh in this in the w women's champions cup so it's uh, or the w Concacaf champions cup so it's um there's a sense of pride that we get to participate in that um there's a sense of nostalgia for me coming back to central america and playing games like this i have i have lots of experiences our players don't have these experiences a lot because they haven't been part of it. So it's a really unique circumstance, but an exciting one for them. 
this competition is really important. I asked Jill and Cami right in the beginning. I said, how do you value and what weight do you put on this tournament versus getting in the playoffs? And they said, we equal, we want both. And so um, we will take it seriously, just like we'll take the Angel City game seriously on Saturday and the rest of the league and the rest of this tournament. The ability to play in a club World Cup would be phenomenal. And and I understand that responsibility very clearly. And that is my goal to help us get there, whether I'm there eventually or not. Awesome. Thanks so much for your time today. Appreciate it. Thank you, Sandra. Uh, Meg Linehan, we'll go to you, you next. Thanks. Hi, Landon. Uh, Meg Linehan from The Athletic. Following up, I guess, on Sandra's question about um, and you saying the door being open, I know kind of everybody immediately made a leap about what your ambitions were in terms of taking this role. And I was just hoping that you could maybe speak to that directly about, you know, whether this is a stepping stone to something bigger or whether this is just about you being in the moment coaching this team. Um, yeah, I'll, let me share something that I've never shared publicly before, because that's an interesting it's an interesting take from people and I understand why they leap there. So I've been offered four MLS co uh, MLS jobs in my life. Okay. Since I started coaching and turned down all of them. And there's a few reasons. One is in no particular order. I love San Diego. I love working with good people. Um, I told Jill when I did this, I, I, when I make a decision in my career, it's about people passion I have for it and the project. And so Jill is good people. I met Cammy and ultimate and immediately we connected. Um, I've known Alex for a long time, getting to know these women quickly. Um, they're incredible human beings. I have tremendous passion every day I wake up after not sleeping because I'm so excited. My wife's like, why are you out of bed again at 3 a.m.? I'm excited to do this every day. And the project's phenomenal. There's amazing resources. The ownership has been phenomenal in saying whatever we need to help you get done, we're going to help you get done. I'm enjoying every minute. There is no better place in the world for me to be working right now than where I'm working with the wave. I am so content and so at peace. And so I understand why people question that or question motivation or whatever, People question my motivation when I didn't play in Europe my whole career and I was happy to play in LA and help grow MLS around good people and have passion for a project that I believed in and be close to my family. So I'm different in that way. I've always been different. I don't worry about the next job or the next gig or what this means or the stepping stone. I am present and happy to be here and I want to help this team succeed. Thanks, Lyndon. Appreciate it. You're welcome, Meg. All right, we'll take just... Let's do two more here um, and more. We'll go with you. Hola, Lando. Un gusto saludarte otra vez. Eh, felicidades por tu nuevo puesto. Eh, me gustaría, ya sabemos que no te gusta hablar del futuro, pero ¿qué tal del pasado? No sé si se te acercaron otros equipos en estos meses, en este tiempo que no tenías trabajo, y también la selección de los Estados Unidos. No sé si te llamaron. Esa sería la primera pregunta. Y la segunda es, que nos hables qué significa para el Wave eh, participar en esta primera edición de la Conca Champions femenil. Uh, no me llamaron, no. Um, para nuestro equipo uh, es un honor. Um, no solamente el primer torneo, además primer partido en la historia. Y experiencias así son um, increíbles, son priceless para todos nosotros. Um, yo tengo, como he dicho, mucha experiencia en este parte del mundo, en CONCACAF, jugando en partidos así. Ahora, como técnico, tengo que compartir mi experiencia con los jugadores. Hoy, uh, cuando entrenamos, todos dicen, ay, es calor, húmedo y todo, y, y están aprendiendo que es diferente aquí. Um, pero estas experiencias son... Um, muy valioso para jugadores, pues estamos muy, muy emocionados. Y otra, ¿qué le dirías a la gente de los locals, los chavos, toda esa afición que generaste, Landon, con el Loyal y que yeah. podría apoyar de alguna manera al Wave? Ojalá que sí, los extraño mucho. Um, este año fue difícil sin fútbol en San Diego para nosotros, con San Diego Loyal. Muchos apoyan, uh, ya apoyan al Wave y, y ojalá que 
que mucho más nos apoya empezando el sábado en, Snap, en Snapdragon. Excelente, gracias. Gracias, amor. All right, so Namas, Abraham Zapata, we'll go with you. Uh, hey, coach, thank you for the time. Uh, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about um, the development of young players. That was kind of your role with the Loyal at the end there with Loyal Select. I was wondering if you could talk about, you know, developing players like Melanie Barcenas and Kimi Escaño and how, how you plan on doing that at, in this new role. Great question. Thanks for asking. Uh, yeah, I mean, Mel, Mel's special. Like, she's very special. And I had seen it, you know, from afar and watching her up close. Um, she has all the ability to be really special. I think what she needs is guidance. And I have been in her shoes. I was a 16 year old who had a lot of talent and people were talking about, and I know exactly what she's going through. So that will be one of my, um, personal projects for sure. Uh, Kimmy, I haven't seen cause she's been injured, but I watched a lot of tape on her and she looks like a very, a very special player too. So I'm excited to work with her. Uh, I think, you know, having the chance to work with Jaden when she's back, there are a number of um, being in, in San Diego surf's backyard. There are a number of uh, young women that train with us too. And there are some really, really good players coming through the system. So I enjoy that. That is where I get my most joy and what I'm most passionate about. The team part I love too, but working with individuals and making them better as players and human beings is where I get my most joy. So I'm looking forward to that. And again, I, I think there's a path here where certainly Mel, because I've seen her, I don't know quite yet with Kimmy and, and others, but um, she has a chance to be really special. And I, I see it as a huge responsibility to help her achieve her dreams. We'll go to Abraham. Yeah, thank you for your time. Um, well, we're coming up on the hour, but thank you all for joining us. Uh, we'll be sending out some more information about more media availability leading up to the Angel City game on Saturday. But thank you so much again. And um, hope you all are able to tune in tomorrow night. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it.